Easy. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel. Um, I don't really even know how to like open up this video because this video is kind of a huge deal and I just want to give a quick disclaimer because I know a lot of people get really really upset whenever I mention problems regarding the game because I get it, like you love this game, you have been playing it for a while maybe even years, and you don't want to see anything bad happen to your favorite game. But I think it's really important that I do speak up because I am worried for this game, and i rather see the game get better, and I do not want to be ignorant. i rather see the reality of this because I don't like living in ignorance. I know it could be blissful, obviously, for a lot of people, but I just, I'm not like that. i rather just talk about the issues I have broken this video down with timestamps, so if you want to see certain uh, parts of the video or go back to them for some reason, you can very easily. I just wanted to make this video to say how worried I am for this game because, again, I love Star Stable, and this is really hard to talk about personally because this game has helped me through so much hard times because I have PTSD and I use this game to relax, but I feel as though the game is breaking down and it needs help, so... Yeah, I guess let's just get into this. Number one, shareholders seem to be above players. To sum it up, Star Stable is a company. They are a business. They have shareholders, which I don't know much about the stock market, but basically shareholders get money from the game the more the game grows. It is like an investment, and because Star Stable has shareholders, which I think began in 2018, it is obvious that they seem to be put above players. The players give money, the shareholders get money. Star Table profits from us and uses that money, and a lot of it, allegedly, goes to these shareholders. So if Star Table makes more money, the shareholders will be happier because they're getting what they want. That is probably why we now get more horses every month, because profit is the goal. You can't tell me it's not, because from what I'm seeing, that's why it seems like they push for us so much to buy Star Coins and more star coins, and then more horses. This is also probably why they don't give us free star coins anymore, or if they do, it's very rare. Because if they give us free stuff, then that means that they will get less money because then we could have that chance of not wanting to buy things then because we could just wait for Star Stable to give us the things for free. So if we buy stuff, they earn more, obviously. Which is probably why I think that Double Star Coins Weekend is most likely going to end eventually. Because we don't know, for sure, but if they were to take away Double Star Coins, that would mean that we would give in and just pay the full price. And then if we pay the full price, they would get more money because they no longer really give us what we want. It's a problem. Maybe Star Stable does say that they appreciate us, but we don't feel like they do anymore. And as a player, I could say that I really do not feel appreciated like I used to feel. We are going to go on a Star Coin strike to try and bring SSO's attention to some issues in their game. This movement became kind of our last option, seeing as no matter how we contact SSO, we always seem to be getting the same cookie cutter responses. And this is kind of the only way that we can see to really reach them. Now this movement has brought some backlash from players who seem to be under the impression that should we not buy star coins for a month 
then it would mean the company would simply shut down and we would lose our favorite game. Now I am here to tell you that this simply won't happen. It's a misconception that a lot of you are carrying because at the end of the day it all really comes down to the shareholders. And SSO is suffering from an interesting problem. They are currently placing the shareholders' interests above their customers, and this will eventually kill the company. Now, the danger with shareholders is when a company starts to turn their focus on shareholders' happiness and not the customer satisfaction, they essentially start to lose sight on what was their original function. In the case of SSO, it was to bring a magical horse gaming experience to players. This focus has now shifted to bring out horses because horses bring in money, money makes shareholders happy, and so we are in a vicious cycle and we're stuck in it. Number two management that I think may sort of be problematic. From what I have seen, Star Stable has gotten a few CEOs over the years. Articles are kind of hard to find on this topic, but I think that the managing is not the best. I think they are the reason why SSO might now have shareholders, which is good because, you know, you need to make money as a business. But this is also probably a reason why the game developers now make us so many horses. Content, quests, do not seem to be a priority like they used to be. Now this person would not recommend working at Star Stable. They gave them three stars and worked there for over three years. Now I do want to point out the positives as well of some of these reviews because I think that's important. And overall, the general consensus I've seen is that they've said that all of the workers, all of their co-workers are super, super nice. But their experience with the management team was terrible. So let's read this. The pros, possibly the nicest work culture I've ever experienced. The people overall, great to be around, work-life balance balance felt good. I personally never had to work overtime, which I'd been afraid of when entering the industry. Working hours are very comfortable as well. Excellent benefits with a high health allowance and a competitive pension plan. The cons are career prospects are minimal, as is salary growth, which means that basically they never get promoted to a higher position in the company. And for salary growth, that basically means they never get a raise, which if you've been working somewhere for three years on the same salary, and you're not growing is really demotivating. At least that's how I would feel. So that is a negative. Change happens slowly, if at all. It's easy to feel like management slash HR has forgotten about things they've promised or simply do not care, which this sentence is concerning because if management doesn't really care about their own employees, do they even care about their community? Which is a question that popped into my mind when I read this. Now this next thing is something that I've seen come back in a ton of these reviews and that is tech debt and poor tools have caused several devs to quit and yet little priority is put on resolving either of those issues. And honestly, when you have a game company and you wanna grow and you wanna go with your time, as I would say, you're gonna keep needing the most recent and the best tech, not only for your employees, but also to improve prove the game right management has expressed little interest little interest in making sso the main product the game the mmo a more engaging game opting instead to focus on creating more horses which drive revenue a lot of people say i miss old star stable because of the nostalgia like no i think you miss it because it was different back then now let's look at those horses release numbers, shall we? 2018 had released 45 horses. However, if you look at 2019, 2019 had a total, and I quote, 66 horses. Which with horse updates slowly starting to surpass the number of content updates. Notice the huge jump in numbers? Well, you're about to see higher numbers from here on out. In total of 2020, there were an average of 68 to 69 horses released. Right now, in 2020, there's a total of 79 Whoa! horses released into the game, including magical horses that came back and new releases. We used to get more content. We actually used to get more than what we do now. There's a reason why we now feel so bored. And on top of this, one of the CEOs once said in an article that Star Stable is pretty much Harry Potter with horses. Now, from my perspective, it seems like Star Stable thinks that they are better than they actually are. Now, if it was 2015, 2016, I would understand why you would say Star Stable is Harry Potter with horses, but realistically, we don't use our wand that often and we don't go to a magical school. This game is deep, but not as deep as it should be.
Now, the game as a player, I could say this game feels like it lacks direction. The quests are not right or the storyline changes too much. Even quests get edited and we don't know because we cannot replay the storyline. So now, new players and old players have different experiences. And on top of that, bugs affect everybody. Honestly, I don't know what to say. There's just way too much to unpack. So, I think I'm just gonna say that I don't know if there's any point of me making theories anymore. Because this story doesn't make sense. I've told you that before and I'm telling you again, this story doesn't make sense. The lore is shattered to pieces, the story is not consistent, there are three different versions of this story now, and none of them align with one another. So, what is the point of making theories anymore? I don't even know if the team knows where this story is taking them. I don't know who these characters are. Considering that this is no longer the product that I paid for, it's not the same story and it's not the same characters, I don't really see a reason for me to stick around anymore. So with that being said, I'm joining the long line of people before me who have quit SSO. Star Stable just kind of feels like the type of business to reject all problems and cover it up with toxic positivity. Yes, our game is bugged, but we made more money this month, and we worked so hard, and we are the best horse game ever! Which, I have nothing against positivity, but this game is not good right now, and I will tell you why, because guess what? This game is no longer going to be the best horse game ever if other gaming companies hop on and realize that horse games can be greater than we imagine. Sometimes competition really is important because it could create innovation. And it is possible that Star Stable is lacking the competition right now, and that is why they aren't really doing what they should be doing. They should just be more horse games in general. <laughs> no, 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 Stacy. You really don't want more horse games on the market, because then it means you'd actually have to work to keep your game relevant. Because at this point in time, the second a better game drops, Star Stable will be dropped like a hot potato because there is nothing that is keeping players in your game except for pretty horses and clubs. Number three, the game is riddled with bugs. On the 1st of November 2021, someone posted on Reddit that their daughter's horses and her friend's items and cash had disappeared overnight. According to the poster, SSO did reinstate the horses. On the 10th of November 2021, another player came forward with the exact same problem. All her horses except for her trackner and starter horse had disappeared. SSO reinstated the horses. On the 14th of November, another player came forward with the same problem. Like the others, she claims she has never shared her password. As of making this video, I don't know if the horses had been reinstated. Once is chance, twice is coincidence, third time's a pattern. A user by the name of Wisteria contacted SSO in regards to a program that was being utilized in the game. Essentially, she was asking for them to patch the program and that she could send them the program so that they can kind of see how it can be patched. The user of the program was essentially making money out of the game and was enabling players to reach level 24, get the blue Connemara Z and do animations that would not be otherwise possible. She makes it clear in the email that she is trying to help and that she has no problem in getting the program and sending it via email. Here is SSO's response. Thank you for contacting Star Stable. This game account is permanently suspended due to severe violations against the terms and conditions involving the use of a third-party exploit program. So they banned her for reporting a problem. She contacted them again, explaining to them that she hadn't used the program and she, that she was trying to help. And then they responded. We thank you for being willing to help, but we have a dedicated team who are working on this and we appreciate your willingness to help. We are lucky to have players like you. Have a nice day ahead. What? Players are now losing horses in their stable or when they buy a horse, they are given the wrong one. Clothes and other items are now vanishing from inventories as if they never existed. Some players no longer get their allowance. Which, I have experienced that. Sometimes I just don't get my weekly star coin allowance. And I have also experienced losing stars I have collected, or areas I have found in my achievements. Textures in the game are bugged. Forgotten Fields has parts of the past. Silver Lake coloring is off in the field. A lot of the trees no longer even have actual bark. I fall through the floor constantly when doing races. In Dino Valley, I even get stuck in the ice. The character sheet in the inventory glitch out in New Hillcrest. 
and may even crash the game. And I have recorded the glitches in one of my previous videos and I will show it on the screen now. There, oh my god, there it is, there it is, there it is. See what I mean? You see what I mean? Oh my god, see what? I got it on camera. I was telling you, that's what I've been experiencing. Bro, I'm telling you, New Hillcrest is, like, possessed. Oh, see? See? Bro, bro. Sometimes I will go through the checkpoints in races and it doesn't even register. Hitboxes are too big. I run into walls, I didn't even know were there, especially in Greendale and Mistfall. I'm really grateful for what they do. They have... You see how broken this game is. Back on, I kept getting achievements that I've already unlocked and I kind of got confused by that because I've already unlocked these achievements what are they what are they doing back um anyway <laughs> basically what happened was everything from my game I think quest wise was basically deleted I had no stars in my collection it literally said zero out of 142 when I'm pretty sure I'm on like 138 stars I then have like all my characters deleted where it like shows the page of like characters that you meet all my quests unlock thingy things were deleted my um spider collection my donkey collection basically everything that you unlock and law books and things disappearing worlds doppelgangers unable to pick up items disappearing items unable to launch unable to full screen full horror galloper random sabine waterbug sleep riding sleep lying sneak peeks disappearing fridge portal trolling number of bugs are growing and expanding at an exponential rate no player can go into a session without coming across at least one bug and some players like myself recently can't even get into the game at all but how damaging are these bugs really well they can most likely wipe out your stable no god please no 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 you've heard of these instances when a player loses all of their horses their gear and cash in a single night this is not a case of their profile being hacked or a password they shared but instead the profile was simply bugged screen also goes black if you run through the door at Jorvik stables and I've gotten thrown a lot. I ran into the trailer one time and got thrown into the sky. Another time I was running in Mistfall doing a race and my horse got bugged or like thrown kind of. Applying horse tack can even be very buggy. Like it won't even show on the horse. Sometimes the horse you are not riding anymore won't even show on the stable board. The fairy doesn't work properly sometimes. And for the past couple of years, the wording in the sentences for the fairy aren't even spelled right. Sometimes when I get on the ferry, it drops me into the ocean, and then I am not able to return to land. I've also heard that because of the updated areas, things aren't where they used to be, making it impossible to finish some quests now. There is times where if you get stuck and try to call for help, the screen will say, no one can pick you up right now. Outdated horses are outdated, obviously, but we can't even use them if we want to now because they are glitchy or bug out when riding them. They repeat the same movements constantly. I think the left or right eye of the Lipizzaner horse doesn't even open sometimes now. So what was the point of keeping old horses in the game if they were going to be neglected like this? And sadly, multiple players have come forward saying that their accounts have been banned because they reported bugs. Now players are even too scared to report anything. Thank you, Star Stable. But this is just a list of bugs that I could think of right now that pretty much bother me a lot. And it can be game breaking because if I play my game and my horses go missing or if I can't get my allowance that I'm a lifetime player for, or if I can't travel properly or do basic things, it kind of isn't great. I don't know if this counts as a bug, but the chat in the game is terrible. Multiple people I knew got chat banned when they didn't even do anything wrong. It is awfully hard to even get normal sentences into the chat without getting rejected, but somehow players are still able to spam the chat, which is strange, but this can lead to players leaving Star Tables chat for other platforms to speak to players or even give out phone numbers. This I don't think is safe, and you can't tell me, oh well numbers get blocked. I have seen plenty of players type in full numbers into the chat like if they wanted to put their credit card information onto the chat they could i've seen that happen before i've also seen players literally say actual swear words in the chat and even say 
really, really terrible things. When a game sees issues with its account, it becomes a liability to both the player and the company. It's a seriously bad look if you can't protect the purchases of your customer. Why should we buy from you if you can't protect what we buy? And SSO's accounts have more problems than a sardine in a shark tank. A few years ago, players could actually physically log into each other's accounts by accident. And it took a while before SSO could deal with the situation. This speaks of a serious security problem in their accounts. SSO can and has been hacked in the past. They are not as secure as they would like you to believe, and they are not as safe. Don't fall for this line. A friend of Liv Opelrock could get into the game files within five minutes. He sent her some screenshots of the game files and told her that he could easily wreak havoc in these files if he wanted to. But is that really a surprise? How many people can edit and change the game files on their own whim? Adding snow effects, seeing spoilers, this is all part of hacking. SSO is not as secure as they would like you to believe. Don't trust them on that front at least. Number four, special gaming mechanics or features are being thrown away. Star Stable got rid of the stamina option where the horse would slow down unless you kept the pace, which was a good feature but they got rid of it because of accessibility issues and I understand that but I think they could have kept it if they just had an enable or disable button so the player could choose for themselves whether or not they actually want the pace to stay or not. Our horses also used to make sounds. They would neigh, they would whinny, you could hear them breathing more or making other horse sounds. Now our horses are pretty much silent and it makes it clear that Star Stable makes our horses seem even more like robots than actual animals. I once read an article one time that was talking about an experience playing Star Stable and they even said that when they played Star Stable, they didn't even feel like they were on a horse. Right now the horses we have in Star Stable are pretty much just pretty transportation methods. Slowing down when going into Dino Valley apparently no longer is even a thing. It doesn't matter if you have a fjord or a pony or a thoroughbred. Your horse no longer needs to resist the cold to go to Dino Valley. It doesn't matter if you have a fjord or a pony or a thoroughbred. Your horse can now go into Dino Valley as if the cold doesn't exist. Before this happened, you would have to buy a cold resistant horse in order to even move properly in Dino Valley. Star Stable keeps removing what makes this game special. Same thing with the ponies. Ponies are pony speed. They are not as fast as horses. So ponies were slower than horses. And guess what? Star Stable decided, let's remove the pony speed. Now, the pony championship is pretty much worthless. And the cold resistant horses, like the Fjord, like the Irish Cobb, and the other horses, they no longer have a purpose. The horses in this game are losing what makes them horses. We used to have to wait for the bus to go to the city in Jorvik. Now we don't have a bus. We have a global store and it completely defeats the purpose of even having shops in Jorvik. I wouldn't mind if we could order from this store and have it delivered to our stables like a shopping online store in Jorvik, but it simply doesn't do that. We want content, not convenience that helps us buy stuff we have to pay the game for. And I deeply miss the Jorvik bus to go anywhere in Jorvik City. I miss it. I miss having the challenge of having to run around Jorvik and then go to shops that I want to buy stuff at. I miss having to wait for the bus, go to the mall, and then do fun shopping sprees on every Saturday. I miss fun things like that. Star Table takes away the challenge and just makes things convenient, but in reality they're making it boring. We want something to do in the game that gives it something fun, like a simulator, you know? Like a lot of people love game simulations. Like for example, I play Planet Zoo, and in that game, you even have to pay taxes. Like a lot of people enjoy realism in games. In real life, you can't just click somewhere in the corner of your eye and say, I'ma buy this, and have it instantly in your inventory instantly in your hands. There has to be some sort of challenge. There has to be a weight, you know? It just... It's not fair, man. Star Stable also, from what I have seen, I may be wrong, but they allegedly got rid of the fashion show, and on top of that, Easter quests, Valentine's Day, and St. Patrick's Day no longer are celebrated, or if they are, the quests no longer exist, or they are different from what we actually want. And speaking of holiday quests, 
We used to have really fun decorating quests in Jarlaheim and also throughout Jorvik for winter, for Santa Claus, for Christmas, and we don't have that anymore either. Like, they removed the quest where we decorate a Christmas tree. I want you to think about that. They removed the quest where we decorate a Christmas tree for Christmas. And this year, Star Stable released the Winter Village again, as they have been doing for the past couple years, but usually we always have races and something fun to do. Instead, this year, we had nothing for the first week. They literally didn't add anything except shops to buy from. Uh, why? Like, they didn't even add their old recycled races to the village. Like, they couldn't even add the races. The tree went from looking very lively to pretty to look at, but kind of dead with these random ass yarn ornaments and not much bright lights that could be found at your dollar store. The village also had less of its decorations removed just so that they don't relate to Christmas. Y'all, I'm gonna be very honest with you, it still looks Christmassy. If they wanted to be inclusive to those that don't celebrate Christmas, this would have been the lovely opportunity to add in traditions such as Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and other holidays that celebrated during winter time as an opportunity to teach people about different traditions around the world. The reason why there's people hating remodeled areas, while yes, nostalgia can be a part of the reason why people don't like them, however, the majority of the reasons for people not liking it is because textures look weird, don't like the layout, vibes don't feel the same, and slash or it don't like how it affected the other areas. And I have heard before that Star Stable probably doesn't want to overload their system or something because that's why they try to upload things in parts. So instead of uploading Mistfall, Wildwoods, and Wildwoods Part 2, they just break it up instead of doing it all at once because they don't want to overload the system but if that's true if that's the case maybe fix your system i don't know what to tell you because i have seen games add major updates without an issue star stable also had the star stable news show and i don't know how i even forgot about this but i used to wake up early just to watch it and see what cool new things the show talked about that star stable added to the game it was fun and i think it brought the community together for a while before it ended granted one of the employees who handled the show i believe left star stable but still the sso news was something many players look forward to watching and our starter horse was supposed to be special because it is our soul horse. They are magical, powerful horses. We have and is the only horse who can handle Pandoric energy. Now, Star Stable got rid of that and now any horse can enter Pandoria. They literally erase the stakes we have in this game, avoid challenge, and make this game easy. Not in a good way. I mean easy in a forgettable way. They find ways to take away nostalgia and anything that makes this game special. I've also heard that if you do not log in for two weeks, the game will also stop giving you the Starcoin allowance. I don't know how true that is, but apparently two weeks of not playing means that you are now inactive and no longer eligible for the currency you paid for. And I do not doubt this because I do lose my Starcoin allowance sometimes. I do not get it sometimes from what I'm seeing. And that's really annoying because I log in every single day. And that's not fair because you should get your allowance if you pay for it. The mall also used to have amazing music. I remember going there on Saturdays and vibing to the fun soundtracks. Now a lot of the songs we have in the mall are soft and no longer are fun to listen to. I know music is objective, everyone has their own vibe, but every mall I have ever gone to has fun music that is pop or hip hop. Isn't Lisa supposed to be a rock star? Why are we no longer having fun rock star songs? And if we do, they're very scarce. They're very not really there and it's no fair because the music in the mall was so good i remember i would literally go to the mall just to listen to that music why doesn't star stable make a music store why can't we purchase music inside the game why can't we do that we could go to the store walk in pick out a record it'd be fun we used to have a walk-in store in silverglade click on the door walk right in there was mirrors there was clothes it was fun and they got rid of that as well Number five, less quests, more horses. More horses means more money. No, you are not required to buy horses in Star Stable, but if you are an older player like me, what are you supposed to do? If I don't buy horses, I can't do anything. I have no quest content. I have nothing. All I have is daily grind and races every day. So yeah, I buy horses to give myself something to do. 
Johann Schoberg then says, Star Stable Online has lots and lots of content. <laughs> And clubs in Jorvik may also require certain horses. And now, new races also may require certain horse breeds. It's like Pokemon, but horses. I think quality is more important than quantity. Yes, Star Stable's graphics have been updated, but that doesn't mean the horses fit the way they should. Yes, they look good, but are they good enough for that breed? All I hear is complaints about the Frisian horse, the Trachner horse, the Clydesdale, the Fjord, the Curly horse, and others. I hear the Frisian horse doesn't look like the Frisian horse, and how the Curly horse looks like an alligator, or how the Trachner horse is buggy. Some horses we even have are mirrored when it comes to their colors, like the paint horse, for example. But, you know, the, the older one, I'll show a picture of it on the screen. But, yeah, even if the mirroring thing was only once, what made Star Stable think that was a smart idea? I have been saying this for a while, but Star Stable focuses on horses rather than quests. They get more money from horses than quests, I think. Like, I remember one time I got an email from Star Stable asking me for feedback, and I felt so happy I got to do a feedback quiz, and it was so cool, right? I open it, and it was literally just a questionnaire about what horse breeds I want in the game. I could be wrong, maybe there's more. But usually what gets added to the game is stuff that isn't really asked for, or it is things that, um, you know, like horse breeds. It's not really content that we really, really want to see that's really, really impactful. And I think Star Stable really does listen more to horse ideas rather than game ideas because horses are easier to make and sell, but that's just my theory. This video is literally just my perspective as a player and I'm taking info that I am seeing and giving it to you. Also, don't forget that cyberbullying also happens if you don't buy certain horses. Like, you could block people, I get it, but sometimes you just give in. When I first started playing Star Stable, I couldn't even get a horse. All I had was my starter, I couldn't afford star coins, and because of that, people blocked me for having a starter horse, or they refused to talk to me. They refused to speak to me because I was a new player. I was a newbie. I was a noob, and I wasn't even that new. I had been a player for months, but because I had a starter horse, no one took me seriously as a player or even wanted to speak to me because I couldn't afford star coins. And I have witnessed other players in the game over the years still continue to get bullied and in a world where we are told to have friends to play this game with, you start to feel lonely if you have nobody. Hence why I made that short film a few months ago. The thing is, people are always going to want a lot of horses, especially if they're pretty and beautifully animated. Having to say you don't have to buy it isn't going to be a valid argument because the desire of wanting something is going to overcome that idea. Other people also prefer to collect every breed, so even if you try, I highly doubt you can get them to stop. Number six, storyline has lost direction. So we find out that Star Stable does not have a dedicated quest team. Employees who are available are most likely used, which means that this group is revolving constantly, most likely. So how could there be direction if there is no solid team to work on and build up ideas? Number one, so there weren't two teams? Or at least there hasn't recently been two teams? I hope you are good enough to explain that to your defenders then, because they've been using that as an excuse for why we only get horses. You said earlier in the article that all emails are forwarded to the respective teams. Well, you didn't have a quest team, so where did my emails go asking you for more quests? Star Stable doesn't even know their own characters. Sabine is no longer Sabine. Dear God, if this doesn't scream Fortnite crossed with Abby from Last of Us Part 2, I don't know what is with her licorice whip of a hair. Somehow she went from a rich preppy bitch of an equestrian to motorcycle 30 to 50 year old woman. Star Stable doesn't know their own characters, which I kind of thought that for a while, but I didn't have the words for it. And then one day, Eleanor Nightwalker uploads a video and she literally had that as a title and I was like she got it she knows exactly what she's saying I watched the video and she's right like I understand what she's saying and totally what I could say now is that Sabine is no longer Sabine Lisa is no longer Lisa and it's no fair for the players because you grow up with these characters and now all of a sudden you can't even identify them I don't understand how did this happen 
This time I'm convinced, the SSO team don't even look at the characters as references when making the new ones. What happened to Rockstar Lisa? What happened to the rock girl who was kind of an outcast and very relatable? Because back when I started playing the game, I was 14 and extremely depressed, extremely emo, extremely outcast. I had no clue what I was doing, no friends really, and it was really hard doing anything, but I saw Lisa and she has my music taste and she fits my personality and now all of a sudden she's this country girl who looks nothing like she was supposed to look like her personality is totally different now and players who have commented on my videos have even pointed out that linda also is different now and alex doesn't even really look like alex stuff just seems off star stable does make amazing graphics these days like i feel like they're doing a good job with making things look good, it's just not the right thing we need, you know? Like, they can make characters look amazing, but that doesn't mean the characters suit the character. And a lot of people now are even pointing out that Star Stable looks like Fortnite, and if you look at Fortnite characters and compare them to Star Stable's new Dark Riders, I totally see that, for sure. Star Stable doesn't update characters, they just make new ones and replace them with the old ones and refer to them as the same name. I did not grow up with the new Lisa or the new Sabine, which don't even get me started on Sabine because this 16 year old girl, rich equestrian vibe, now looks like some late 20s motorcycle chick, um, kind of reminds me of Lara Croft. And I think Cassia looks cool, but she kind of turned into a child all of a sudden. That's how she looks, at least. And I didn't even know who Jay was at first. I was like, who's Jay? Then I realized that Jay is Jessica, actually. And then Elise is now a child, but Elise is no longer Elise. Elise is now Nihil. And then I find out her name gets changed to Chayo. Like, what is up with the editing? Why are things changing? Nothing's making sense. By the way, from what we're seeing, every Dark Rider, I'm pretty sure, has a horse, but now Elise is having no horse. Like, from what I saw in the game art, she now has, like, a stick horse, you know what I mean? Like, when we were kids, we'd have those stick horses. Yeah, that's what she has. It's probably a magical stick horse. Yeah, whatever. I just don't... I don't know how I feel about it. But never in my wildest dreams would I think that the fourth Dark Rider was a colorful child with a toy horse. It's not even the name that we got initially for her. Jessica has become a different character called Jay, and Stalker has been replaced with a different horse called Mortifa. Why didn't they make Jay the fourth Dark Rider? And if that is Nihili, then what about the horse at the platform? Is this the same horse? And since when is it the horse? I thought it was the girl. And what happened to Elise? Now she's called Chio. What? And back to the storyline and quests. I was told that nearly 20 storylines so far have been removed altogether from the game. So I have lost all hope in Dino Valley at this point, as well as Epona. But on top of this, Star Table is going back and editing quests, so if you are an older player, your version of the storyline is different from a new player's version of the storyline. If you go back and look at her rescue mission quest of saving her, they changed the story completely. Lisa went from using a ball of star energy to launch the shit out of the Dark Rise into oblivion for jumping us, to intimidating Sabine's funky ass and then her running away like a little baby. And after all, we can't redo quests unless we make a new account. So does Star Stable have millions of players or are there just millions of accounts? And how many of them are inactive? Too many questions, not enough answers. Star Stable really doesn't really have direction from how it looks. I mean, I knew something was off of the quests the second that uh, one character got added to the game. I don't know how to say her name, but you know, I think it's pronounced Rai Anon. Ryananon, I, Ryananon, I don't know how to say her name, but they're replacing content with grind, whatever. They're taking the quests and saying, basically, here, have some grind instead, is what I'm trying to say. And I think they do this because grind probably takes longer to finish than an actual quest. When I do a quest, it could take me maybe 30 minutes, but if I want to train my horse all day, that'll take two hours. And if they 
have lots of people playing the game for longer by doing grind, they could probably brag about how long their players stay on the game because we love it so much apparently. Changing things so often is also annoying, like before Mistfall came out, it was called Furfall. I told all of my friends about this cool place, then it comes out and it's called Mistfall. It's apparently a big forest when in reality it really isn't. Or what about Elise, or Nihil, or Chio, Chayo, I don't know how you could change a character that often. In Wildwoods, I was expecting ranger quests that went really in depth and maybe even had something to do with Soul Riders, or maybe nothing at all to do with the Soul Riders. I was actually expecting a huge national park with quests relating to that for each part of Mistfall and Wildwoods. And Wildwoods is part of the main story. If you think about it, it really is just a knockoff of Warrior Cats, but with horses. Number seven, lore book is maybe gone, probably gone, we don't know where it went. Back onto the storyline, it is clear that not having a dedicated quest team makes it hard to have a good storyline, because how could you care about the story if you aren't even really dedicated to it and do not have the time to build it up or even learn it? When Star Stable updated Lisa, they literally asked themselves who Lisa was. Now, I understand asking a question, but my god. Star Stable has been a game for 10 years, and on top of that had games released beforehand. You better not ask who the hell Lisa is! Lisa had a backstory before, but it was pretty vague in my opinion. When I just started as an art director, I was in the process of remaking all the art of the game and we came to the Soul Riders and felt like, okay, let's do them, let's remake the Soul Riders so they come up to the same standard as, as the other uh, art in the game. And I went to you, Matilda, and said, okay, so let's do Lisa. Yeah, and I was like, great, so who's Lisa? And when you asked me, I was like, I don't know, who is Lisa? Then we realized we have a problem because we we need to know our characters if we're gonna make them believable. If we if we don't know them, nobody knows them. <laughs> no. There is a theory that Star Stable had a book about the storyline. This way they would follow the book and add things to the game based on the story they had. I heard somewhere that the lore book is probably gone and may have been missing when renovating the building. And I keep hearing the theory that the lore book is probably missing because what if Star Stable was renovating the building and the lore book got lost somewhere? Now, I do not have proof of this, but I did see somewhere on Tumblr a photo of an office, I think, in Star Stable with this sticky note on the wall that said find lore book or something along those lines. I don't know how true it is. For all we know, it could be, uh, you know, not real. I think someone said a game developer posted it, but I don't know if I have any thing to show you regarding it. I will put it on the screen right now. But yeah, it's just, uh, it's just confusing. One Tumblr user who has professed they could fix SSO's lore. Same, same user, same. They made a joke about how SSO's lore book was a sticky note written with purple glitter ink that said IDK LOL, and then they lose, and they lose it at least once a month. An actual SSO game dev responded with a picture of said sticky note encrusted with the like, plastic sticker jewels and an extra note to say the lore book had been lost for two days. Take it as you will. And don't forget Star Table published books and they no longer mean anything. They changed their own story so much that the books that this author put her effort into no longer mean anything because they are not canon. Things were changed and stuff don't add up anymore. Not to mention that this also makes the books officially not canon. So let's see, how many versions of this story do we have now? We have the original one and we have the book one, which was the new one up until now, which has been replaced with whatever comes now. I, I'm so confused. What is the story? Uh, there's been so many feelings about this. I have cared about Jorvik for so many years, throughout my childhood and even my adult life, as it turns out, because I got into SSO. Funny enough. I also do not know if Star Stable removed this from the quests, but I remember when I was a new player, I had a Soul Rider quest where Fripp and Avalon told us that their special book was stolen. 
from them I think by the Dark Riders and sometimes I wonder if this is a hint that the book was actually lost in real life and that could be why things took a turn, especially considering the possibility that the original game developers may have left SSO. Obviously, how could new employees know what to do then? They don't have the people who helped them build the story to tell them what happens next. Or maybe the original employees own the rights to that book and it left with them. We don't know. We will never know. It really is just a giant theory. And even if the lore book isn't lost, I think it is still strange to have a sticky note on the wall saying, find lore book or whatever. Like, why is it such an inside joke? What? Number eight. Game developers are hindered because technology is behind, most likely. Glassdoor is a website where employees, ex-employees, can share their experience of working for a company. Surfstable has reviews. The shared experiences from employees are not good, though which I give huge credit to Star Stable Updates for actually bringing this to the surface because if she didn't say anything, I don't know if we would know because why would we check Glassdoor? And this is not the only review that says this. There's plenty of reviews that say that Star Stable, the company, management, is only really interested in gaining more money. This person gave the company a two-star review. They wouldn't recommend the company and work there for three years as well. The pros are nice workplace, friendly employees, great office placed as central as they come nice benefits but the cons are incompetent management tech debt like i said this is a repeating thing that runs 10 plus years deep that goes unaddressed company couldn't keep seniors if their lives depended on it little to no discipline development in many ways artistically speaking this is a career dead end company makes record after record year yet salary development is minimal this, this is so important. If Star Stable is making more and more money every single year by, of course, pushing out more things to buy in the game, which in turn makes more people buy Star Coins, which in turn gives them more money, what is their reasoning for one, not giving their employees a raise when it's deserved, and two, not putting that money towards their tech debt and making this game actually worthwhile? All Star Stable is doing right now, from what I can tell, is digging their own grave, and they're gonna die out within one or two years. That is my personal perspective on the future of Star Stable, and I think it's really sad because this game has so much potential, you guys but it doesn't make the business look good at all, especially when Star Stable basically brags about how many players they have. If you have so many players, why can't you fix the technology and give us more content and pay up your employees? After all, you make so much money, right? It's just stupid because when you are at college, you are taught to use the most up-to-date technology or at least the most popular tech. Right now at my college, all the software I use is new. The oldest is 2019, so when you are taught these new things and then go to make games, because let's say hypothetically you got hired at Star Stable, and let's say hypothetically they have outdated tech, now what do you do? It is hard because you have to relearn the software and teach yourself how to use out-of-date technology. And on top of this, there is no dedicated quest team, so it probably is extremely difficult to focus on quests and get them out in a mannerly time, because if Star Stable uses employees who are available, rather than those who could focus on the story and build it up, obviously things won't work right. I have been saying this for years, if Star Stable updated once a month instead of every week, we would have more content and things would be more focused. I mean, imagine you are a game developer and the deadline is every Wednesday. This can distract you from things you are working on in the long term because you have to focus on the short term. Number 9. Incorrect advertising gets players but doesn't keep them. Now, false advertising is a heavy word, and I do not believe that Star Stable false advertises, but I do believe that they pull at our heartstrings and market themselves in a way that is not very real, but yet is real enough to keep us. Recently, Star Stable released their newest horse, which they dubbed the Jorvik Wild Horse. They boasted in ads and comments, which one will you bond with? Suggesting that instead of just buying the horse, we might have to first earn its trust. They further explained how wild the horses were and how rare it was for them to approach humans. It was going to be, at least according to the ads, something truly unique. 
The buzz around this horse was astounding. Players were wondering and debating on how the horse would play, if you would have to catch them, if you would struggle to place a saddle on it. The hype was growing faster and faster, and when the horse finally landed, the servers were full enough to make some games crash. Allegedly. And how would you go about finding this prestigious wild horse of Yorick? Where would you begin your search? You went ahead and bought one, of course. Oh, <laughs> Star Stable also shows little photos of things that look like they're in-game, but they aren't. A falcon on a player's arm, a player in a field sitting with their horse, friends talking. It is sketchy because we can't do these things in the game. I am pretty sure Star Stable used to put under their pictures that these photos are not actual game content because when Star Stable makes these photos, pictures, artworks, it really is just to show something cool. I would say that it is kind of like when commercials will show toys talking or, you know, a toy car zooming around a room. So cool, you know? I think it's just used to show you that it's to get people using their imagination, which I understand and usually under the commercial it will say, this is not actual footage or this is, you know, CGI, whatever. But some of the photos that Star Stable shows is kind of sketchy because I think Star Stable uses it to an extent where it kind of feels like lying. I wouldn't care if Star Stable showed us riding with our friends or running with our pet, but some of the photos they share or videos, they take it too far. For example, the seahorses Akaltiks turned seahorse. Photos of them are in the water, swimming. Now we get excited, we think, finally, we could go in the water, we could go swimming in Jorvik. Then players buy the seahorses just to find out it is like any other horse, but is just a reskin. I think Star Stable imagines themselves as this cool epic game, but they are cooler to themselves than they are to us, because what I am seeing sounds like the game has great ideas, but they can't actually use these ideas because maybe they don't have the technology to. So obviously, pull at our heartstrings and hope for the best. When the latest Wildwoods Quest came out, Star Stable spoke about it like it was this big deal and we had to rush over and see what all the fuss was about because apparently Sabine the Dark Rider is there and it is crazy. Then you do the quest and see Sabine for like two seconds and that's it. Pretty much to be continued. And I think on top of that, there was even an article they made on their website where they said like, get Star Rider because you have to see what's going on. And it's like, bro, nothing even happened. You do not need to pull at people like that. I also don't like how Star Stable talks about limited time horses. For example, magic horses like the seahorses or the other magical horses we get that have special colors, they act like these horses will never come back. So you feel like you must get the horse or else you will never know again. You will never have the option to get one again. It's that kind of thing, but don't worry. The horse usually does come back, but because you don't know if it actually will come back, all I feel from this game is FOMO, aka the fear of missing out, and I am pretty sure there has been a few times where Star Stable has said, these horses will never come back. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I saw that somewhere, and it's no fair because if you get told that and then they bring it back, it's like, whoa, you just lied to me. I also don't like how when Mistfall came out, even now, we can hear deer sounds, it almost sounds like an elk, and there is no deer anywhere though, so it's no fair because you think you are going on this adventure and can explore the wild to find wildlife, but the map simply isn't big enough to even explore the forest because Mistfall isn't even a forest. It is just a space with trees. You could get lost in the forest. Um, in real forests you can. But the only forest that we could get lost in right now is the forest in Dino Valley. Even now I still get lost in that forest because you know, like, it all looks the same, and that's how real forests are. And Wildwoods has deer that walk around, but the game just isn't as good as it should be. Wildwoods and Mistfall as a national park is a letdown in quests and design. It looks great, but it just isn't great enough to be given to players. They hype us up so much that we get disappointed. It feels like ideas are made, but they aren't exactly fulfilled, and the ideas, when they eventually do get put in the game, they are never really completed. I'm pretty sure we still have incompleted storylines throughout most of Jorvik. We probably still have incompleted storylines in Jarlaheim and also in Mistfall and obviously in other areas too. I'm pretty sure even South Hoof and Epona. 
I could be wrong, but I know there's a lot of storylines we still have not finished yet, and there was a storyline we had, which was for, in South Hoof, there was Madison and her horse, her pony, and I think that took two years to even finish, and it's just so strange how it takes so long to get a quest out. Number 10. Why I am worried and you should be too. I have to say this. The map isn't big enough. This game don't grow. This game is 10 years old, or at least close to it. Star Stable was made in 2011. Over the past 10 years, the game has failed to grow in size for the map. All we have gotten since 2016 is Pandoria, Yorvik City, Wildwoods, Mistfall, and besides that, before 2016, we did get the Harvest County, South Hoof, Golden Hills Valley, and Dino Valley as well. Now, this sounds like a lot of places. However, they are relatively small compared to the original Star Stable games, and even without the old games, the areas in Star Stable are still too small. They could easily be explored in just a few minutes, really, and I could run across the map in about seven minutes and run down it in about five which I got that idea from Ginny O because her videos go really in depth. Like I said before, Mist Falls a forest and yet it isn't big enough to get lost in, like in other games that have giant forests, you know? The map just isn't large enough and we do not have the completed southwest part of the map and it has been 10 years. Star Table's map is actually huge, but we have not even gotten half of that so far in the past 10 years and the theoretical size of the map is even larger. This game is riddled with bugs, the growth is slow, the players are not intrigued really anymore, the content is lacking. Over the past 10 years, we haven't even been able to finish half of the storyline that we paid for. Now put that in perspective, 10 years of game development and we haven't even finished the bottom part of the map. And on top of that, the storyline, 10 years? That's... it's ridiculous how long it takes to get a quest out. Now imagine, I want you to imagine this, say that you joined the game in 2016. Okay, you joined the game in 2011. That's even worse because that means that now you've waited 10 years. I just... 10 years and we haven't even, like, gotten towards the end of the storyline. It's like, it's so slow and growing. This game would be considered by gaming standards in the gaming industry as a beta game, early access even. A player can begin and finish this game. Grind, storyline quests, regular quests, all of that, in about three to five months. And I know that because I did that. The sad thing is that players also have no reason to wait because they can't even stay interested. What do I do? I train. That's it. For the past four years. And if I have quests, I finish them already. This game is buy horses and shop for clothes on repeat. This is not Harry Potter with horses. This is Pokemon if it was horses. But I can't even say that because if Pokemon was for horses, I would have been able to capture that Yorvik Wild and actually have a great experience playing the game instead of buy horse, train, and repeat. At the rate this game grows, I could wholeheartedly say that the map would take about 10 to maybe even 20 years more to finish, maybe even 30. The storyline at this rate would also take about probably another 10 years, maybe 15. So will I have to be in my 30s or even 40s just to see the end of this game's story? It's sad because I remember in 2016 when I started playing, I sat there in my room thinking of all the possibilities and talking to my friends in the game about how cool this game will look once it grows to its full value in about a few years. Now, um, that aged bad. It sounds extreme, but that's just how it is. Like, I had no clue how bad and how downhill this company had gotten, how bad this game has gotten until I researched it. And technically, the game would count as an inactive game, I believe. Star Stable brags about the 30 million to 40 million players they have worldwide, yet only a few million ever log on, if that. In one of my last videos, somebody commented saying that I make a fuss over nothing. But the problem is, this isn't nothing. This is a huge business with nearly 200 employees. And if it goes downhill, so will they, because this is their livelihood, okay? Like, this game is not just a game, this is people's lives, okay? Like, they went to college to be a game developer, to be whatever they have to be 
and they work at Star Stable, and it's just, it's, it's crazy. It's really crazy, and I feel bad, because I know someone could say, okay, well, they could just get another job. Okay, let's say hypothetically they all got another job, right? Still not fair, because this world, Jorvik, it's a story, it's, it's sad to me, because imagine you put your whole time, your livelihood, everything, into making this world, this 3D world, your Vic, the characters, everything, the storyline. You made this world, and it is coming to an end. It's sad because, as a writer, if I wrote a story regarding a world that I made, and all the storyline to it, and the characters, and all of a sudden it got deleted, let's say, right? I would be severely depressed because my characters, my storylines, my creations I make, the worlds I create, it's like a child almost to me because I created that and I am growing that and it's no fair that these people at Star Stable might lose the game if it doesn't improve because if this keeps going the way it's going, I can't see players coming back because Already, all of my friends have quit except for a select few, and all I hear all the time is that people want to quit Star Stable, and I believe the reason for this is that the game cannot progress like it should because although they have nearly 200 employees, the technology, if it is outdated, would make a lot of sense because ex-employees do claim that the tech is outdated, and SSO is a endpoint kind of for a career so so I believe if the tech was updated we could have more quests and more areas and even more horses faster. Star Stable doesn't evolve quick enough right now to keep up with anything. Now think about it this way, let's say hypothetically in the next years, decade, whatever, they do manage to update everything in the game. In the game, the graphics, right? By then that could be outdated. They move too slow and they're developing. From my perspective as a player, this game really does seem to care more about shareholders and I think that because of what I saw in Rattle's video because they put it together perfectly and that's exactly what I think is needed. I think we need more people speaking up and putting the info together, putting the pieces together and figuring out why things are going wrong. This video is just my perspective, after all, I am just a player. But players make the game, and if the players don't speak up, the game can't improve. And if the game can't improve, and it gets too behind, then it can't keep going, and then all of a sudden, you find out that Star Stable is no longer gonna keep going. And that would be very, very depressing to a lot of people. So, because of the whole shareholder scenario, I think that if we stopped buying Star Coins, this would force Star Stable to go back to their focus of making a good game not being greedy and wanting to make more money. There's a reason why people say Star Stable is money hungry. Now everyone needs money. It is a great thing to have, but at this point we are being disappointed time and time again. It's a constant letdown. It has been 10 years. Put that into perspective. It has been a whole decade, and this game would technically be considered beta or early access by gaming standards. It is falling apart. Bugs are not being fixed like they should be, and when there is bad bugs like missing horses or missing star coins, players get blamed. That's why I'm worried. A few players have even reported canceling their Star Rider and still being charged for it. This game has problems and it will go away. The game it will go away. It will be no longer a thing if it doesn't get fixed. There isn't even a dedicated quest team, so no wonder why the Soul Riders no longer look like themselves, and the Dark Riders no longer do either, and the storyline feels like the lore book actually has got lost somewhere in renovation, and apparently, allegedly, all nine original employees left the company. Now, we don't know why, or if this even has happened. People leave jobs all the time, they switch over to new jobs all the time, it happens, you know? It just feels like the management and everyone just has no clue what to do from my perspective as a player, because if they did know what to do, then why do we have so many bugs in the game? Why is there a lack of storyline content? Why is there a lack of areas? The last actual storyline content we got was in 2019, and I'm pretty sure we did get more in 2020 or earlier 2021, I'm not really sure, but I don't even remember it that good because that's how 
like I guess lackluster it was I could be wrong but for the most part this game is all grind and no actual fun unless you have friends which many have quit so now you're alone many players also already are leaving because they are fed up with paying for something that they are promised to get but is taking too long to receive even if you consider Vianon, I don't know how to say her name, Rhiannon, as an important part of the storyline, her quests are still just grind. Training is a cover-up for grind. We want stories, we want exploring, we want old Star Table back. We don't want to be told to be patient. We have waited 10 years. Where's the game at? The game developers are not lazy. I think they are just lacking the tools they need, because if they didn't lack the tools, this wouldn't have happened. So never blame them. They are not the management. The management is the management. The game developers just do what they are told. I read somewhere that Star Stable wants to be going strong these next 10 years, and I don't know, man, a 20-year-old game? Great! Maybe instead of 5 months worth of story, we will have 10 months of story. People can't keep waiting. Do you really think people want to stay for that long? Yeah, if the game is that great, but if they have fun, and this is all wait and grind. Like, I think we even had a quest with Alex the one time that even said, you have to be patient. Like, oh my god, 10 years, 10 years, a decade, 10 years, like, put in perspective, like, if you started the game when you were 10 years old, right, you would today be 20, and the areas of the map are not finished yet and on top of that neither is the storyline it's just do you see what i mean like why is the growth so slow other game companies who have more or less players in star stable are growing faster and they're doing more faster and they're getting things done faster and they have less bugs and like that's what i'm hearing and i i get it star stable isn't a huge corporation you know technically i think they would be considered a small business because they aren't this giant gaming company you know what i mean but they do make lots of money from what i've heard they make millions upon millions so they make tens of millions and it's like that's crazy that you're making so much money and we have no clue where that's going but now i have realized that i am supporting a greedy company like to me, it seems greedy. It just does. Because why is it taking so long to have content out? Why is it... It's just... I'm not trying to drag the company down, but this is my perspective as a player who has paid so much money to the game for Star Rider and Star Coin over the years. So I'm going to go on strike until Star Rider and Star Stable gets their act together because Star Stable is going to end if they don't change. The only reason they have been going on for so long is because they're a horse game and they have not really any more competition. Like, even if they do have competition, Star Stable is nostalgic and they have a storyline that keeps people here, but now all of a sudden people are quitting the game because the storyline changes too much. Um, it's just falling apart and it is only a matter of time before we get a notification one day that says that the game is gonna close its doors. And I hate to scare people, but that is reality. Like, I have seen my favorite games shut down before. I have witnessed playing amazing games with amazing worlds and amazing stories and coolest friends ever and the bestest type of thing to play. It's incredible, you know? You have this fun world and then all of a sudden, one day, you get an email that says, this game is closing its doors and now all of a sudden you can no longer talk to your gaming friends anymore and everything's shutting down and it's just, it's sad. I hate to scare people, but I don't want to see it happen again. I don't want to see another game close its doors. And Star Stable might claim they listen, but it feels like if they do listen, then why don't we feel listened to? In my opinion, I think that Star Stable should sell their game to a larger gaming company if they can, who could possibly place the game on Steam and develop the game quicker and add in actual useful content. Now, they could sell the game and it could end even faster, or they could sell it and it could grow even faster and go back to how it should be. I just don't believe Star Stable is being properly managed right now by anyone like I just feel like it's kind of falling apart and if it's not falling apart why is there so many glitches bugs why do players get blamed why do we have storyline quests every couple years why are people quitting so much at a rapid rate I get it all games have bugs because that's just how game development works but it's like my guy 
people are not getting their star coin allowance people are not getting their horses they are losing things in the game they paid for it's just i i don't know it's just odd and there's players who get banned for reporting bugs in the game like what like you can't just avoid this stuff. I can't make this stuff up. Like, it's just so confusing how people refuse to see what's going on. Like, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that Star Stable actually gets their act together and becomes bigger and better. But again, like, you can't just sit there and be like, this game's perfect, nothing's wrong with it. Like, no, there is problems. Like, and it's not working out. I fear that this is a repeat of Bella Sarah. I remember I would play that game and then towards the end it started to get buggy. I remember I couldn't finish quests properly because I remember if they added quests, you could redeem codes to get more of them and I couldn't get help from customer service and then things in the game started to get removed and then and then Star Stable came out and then everyone I was friends with left Bella Sarah for Star Stable and now all of a sudden a quest during the game as well as I think four or five other games that are horse games are going to be released this year and what if everyone leaves Star Stable for another game? What if history repeats itself? I don't want that to happen. Tell me how you feel in the comments. I know a lot of people probably won't agree with me and that is fine but this is just how me and a bunch of other players feel especially older players and I think that it is only fair that we speak up because we do not feel the way the game should make us feel. And when I say older players, I mean players who've been playing for years and they are not seeing what they want to see because they get left behind all the time. The new players get new content and then all of a sudden older players are left with what? For example, I remember when Mistfall came out, I think Star Stable said you had to be level 12 to even do it. And I was like, what? I had to unlock, I think, opponent at level 17? And there's people getting, they're getting Mistfall at level 12, like the new players are getting things quicker and the older players get left behind and I think Star Stable should focus more on the long term rather than the short term because if you're a new player you don't need new content, you have all the content in the world until you become an older player and you get left behind just like everyone else has been getting left behind. So yeah, this video is basically a summary of the problems and if you could think of anything just comment it down below and I hope you all have a nice day. Bye!